In this video, we'll show you some commands and configurations that can help you make your life easier as web developer. I always prefer to use the command line before using any client application. Uh, I think as web developers, we should have a good understanding of the command line because this will allow us to uh, automate little tasks and save some time. So let's get started. So let's say you have a group of big images. In this case, I have, I have some uh, backgrounds. You can see here, this image is about four megs and the other one is one meg. So let's check the, the dimensions. You can see this one is about 4,000 pixels width. So uh, let's say that we want to resize those images to 800 pixels width. Uh, I, I could do that using some kind of editor, like uh, in this case, my Mac by default will use a preview, or I can basically do that from the command line and save some time because if, for example, in this case, I, ha I only have two images, but what if I have 10 or hundreds of, or hundreds of images? So uh, the, that will take a lot of time to do manually. So on Mac, I can use a command called zips. And this command will basically do the, the, the process uh, automatically. For example, if I, if I want to resize this image to 800 uh, pixels width, I will type zips and dash uh, z. And this is uppercase. Um, basically, this is to preserve the aspect ratio of the image. So basically, the image does, doesn't look weird or, or a stretch or something like that. So if I want to uh, resize all the images in this folder, in the current folder, in all the JPEGs, I will type this, um, a wildcard, and hit enter. And if I list this there, let me clear this out. If I list this, you can see the, the new size is uh, a lot, uh, is, is a lot smaller and let's actually open the new image and you can see it's basically 800 pixels let's do this from the command line so it's 800 pixels and the height is automatically set to keep the aspect ratio so we don't have to worry about that but uh, you can also uh, specify the, the the width and the height I don't I don't recommend doing that because of what I uh, what I say basically you have to to keep the aspect ratio of the image so it doesn't look strange but it's in other cases for example I have some logos here in other cases you don't want to modify the 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 original image but you want to create a new image as a thumbnail for example uh, I have some logos here. Um, if I, let's open this one so you can actually see them. So if I want to have a, a, a smaller version of this, of this logo, I can run zips, um, the same command, the Z, uh, 100 pixels width, the original image will be this one and the out the the, the output image will be called uh, let's call this octocat logo 100 and we'll get the the new image so we are not actually here modifying the original image we are creating a new one so we keep the both the original and the new thumbnail so that's for one image but what if we want to do that for all the images in the in the directory in the folder so in that case i'll have to use a little bash uh, command a, a, a for loop so in this case i have to type for file in um, wildcard png uh, do 
sips dash z 100 pixels width this will be the fire parameter but basically this is whatever whatever is in the in the name of the of the file basically this is the name of the file sorry and the output will be the in this we want to create a new thumbnail with the the name of the image as part of the name and we add a, suff a, a suffix called thump so in this case we have to use dollar sign file double percent dot the asterisk we close the the curly brace dash and if we want to use this naming convention of in dash thump dot png we we use a semicolon here and we we basically close the the for loop here so all the images in this folder we we have now a new thump image of 100 pixels width as you can see here let's open this file actually and you can see here it's basically a new version but if you don't use um, if you don't use mac if you're for example on linux uh, you can do the same thing using a command called convert that's that comes with the image image magic package so if you are on linux you simply could run this image magic apt get install image magic and you will get that command and you can do the same thing basically you just run convert um, autocad logo for example and let's say we want to uh, resize uh, we want to create a new a new image like uh, for example a 200 width uh, a thumbnail or image so i can call this octocad logo dash 200 as the as the new image and i can get the same basically the same result which is this one so yeah those are the two options for for two operating systems i have no idea if you can do something like that on Windows. We often have to SSH into different servers, and this uh, require you to remember IPs, users, and SSH uh, keys, locations, uh, but we can simplify this process so we don't have to memorize or copy and paste commands all the time. Uh, when you SSH into a server, uh, assuming that you have uh, an SSH key, usually run a command like this um, ssh dash i so you can specify the the key uh, i have a key in in my dot ssh folder for a little virtual machine that i just started so i will use that as an, as an example uh, that's the path to the key and it's, uh, it's running on the on this port 2200 and the username is vagrant and it's running on my local host so that will be the command to ssh so as you can see i now into the server but that's quite a long a long uh, command so what i usually do is create an alias like this alias and i give that a name for example dev oh sorry dev and i put the the command here and now when i want to um, ssh into a server let's clear this out i can just type dev and i will get into the server with just one simple command so that's one option if you have many servers you can keep adding aliases um, 
and you can basically name this according to the project for example like project x dev or or project x prod that's that's usually the convention i use but but there's another option so if you don't want to use aliases uh, you can use the ssh uh, config so let's add the same command here let's make this bigger we you will have to type uh, host dev uh, here the host name which is localhost one one twenty seven zero zero one. The user will be vagrant. The port will be twenty two hundred and identify file ident identity file, sorry. Identity file that will be the 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 path to the key. So let's just copy and paste this and save uh, with uh, colon wq if you're not familiar with Beam, but you can use uh, the editor of your preference so now i can type ssh space and the name of the the host i gave in the in the file which is dev and i get the same result i can ssh into the into the server in this case a virtual machine so that's our <clears throat> those are two options i personally prefer to use aliases because i can just type one word to ssh into a server also i can use tab if i don't remember part of the of the name but if you reboot the your computer your machine you will lose that alias it will not be loaded so uh, what you need to do is to add that to the to your bash profile file here so in this case i have i have a little customized uh, bash profile file so if you want to check it out i will put a link to the to my dot files which is i have a repo with that but basically here I can load different configurations for different things. For example, I, I want to put my aliases here, uh, exports here, um, in the extra file. I What I like to do there is to put uh, things like, uh, basically I don't want to, to commit to the repo that have some sensitive information, like for example, these aliases with on different IPs and names so yeah but if you don't have that basically you can add your aliases here there's a shortcut that i use all the time to find previous commands uh, and that is Control r it will basically allows you to search in your history for uh, previous commands that you have run for example i uh, can type the first part of the command if, if i want to run again the convert command or if i just type cont if i want to find the the sips command for example or, or that long sips for loop i can just type that so that's pretty handy uh, it's basically something that i do all the time sometimes you you run uh, a command and you want to use some part of that command you just ran. For example, in this, if I want to, to create a new deer here uh, called Tom's, and I want to CD, CD into that deer, I can type CD space exclamation mark dollar sign, and I will get into that deer. In this case, <clears throat> the, this will replace the last part of the of the previous command. Uh, for example, I, I can touch a file here, something like this. And if I wanted to open that file, I will do the same. And you will open the file that I just previously touched. So 
is a very simple one, but it's, it's, it, it can save you a lot of time. If you have a, a zip file and you want to know what is basically inside that file, you usually have to unzip it so you can access the, the content. But there's another option. You can actually use BI or BIM to, to open that file and see what's inside without really uh, unzipping the file. So I can just type B or BI and use the previous uh, shortcut, the exclamation dollar sign. And as you can see here, this is basically the content of the WordPress zip. And if I, even if, if actually, if I want to see one file there, I can just hit enter and I can actually access the, the file. So it's, that's pretty cool. It's another thing that will save some time. So I think that's it for this video. If you want to share some of your command line tips or tricks, please leave your comment below. I probably create a new version, a new a part two of this video because I have some more common life tips I want to share. So subscribe if you are interested. Um, I see you on the next one. Thanks.